right now on Sunrise. Chaos erupts outside the Brooklyn Center Police Department. This is the Minnesota State Patrol. We are in violation of Minnesota State Statute 609705 of lawful assembly. Plus, we're expecting charges today against the now former officer who shot and killed Dante Wright. Peaceful protests turned violent in Brooklyn Center with dozens of people arrested. We'll show you the objects people threw at police. Then pressing pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine after several women reported blood clots. What you should know if you already got this vaccine. Well, many of us are waking up to a fresh coating of light snow. Flurries and a few sprinkles stay in the forecast throughout the day. And patio season precautions from how to order digitally to how many people you should invite to happy hour. We dive into what to expect as more of your favorite hangouts open back up. It's Wednesday, April 14th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. And good Wednesday morning to you and thanks for joining us. We've got a lot to get to with the police shooting death of Dante Wright. But first, Alicia is following some breaking traffic news. Yeah, this morning. If you're waking up in the Osseo area this morning, you're dealing with this uh, multi vehicle crash has closed down 169 northbound. Looks like some people are getting by on the southbound lanes, but again, 169 northbound still closed. And I want to give you a bird's eye view of uh, what we can see from that crash. So there were reports that about 10 vehicles were involved. You can see uh, about four or five of them right now on this traffic camera angle, completely crunched. We were told there were some serious injuries involved in this crash as well. So yeah, from this angle, it does look like both lanes are still closed down for the time being. So if you're waking up in that area this morning, there are uh, some significant slowdowns. I will be talking about a potential detour option here coming up in a few minutes. That update, Alicia. Now to the latest out of Brooklyn Center, a fiery end to another night of unrest. Riot police pushed back against people out after curfew, protesting the police shooting death of Dante Wright. A lot to get you caught up on. Here are three things you need to know this morning. About 60 people were arrested Tuesday night during unrest. Authorities say bricks and cans were thrown at forces, trying to keep the peace into the night. Meanwhile, Officer Kim Potter, who shot and killed Dante Wright, has resigned from the Brooklyn Center Police Department. She could face criminal charges as soon as today. And this information all comes as curfews across the metro were lifted just moments ago. We have team coverage once again this morning. We start with Kaya out in Brooklyn Center with the latest on the unrest. Kaya. Well, we got an update overnight from Operation Safety Net, and they began by thanking protesters who remained peaceful. They also mentioned that the majority were, but they also said some groups were violent, and they showed us examples. There were those that decided to come out and throw bricks, a light here, alcohol bottles, cans, and other items at law enforcement officers. Officials say some groups launched fireworks and we saw a couple of fires. One was in the dumpster area of an apartment building just down the block. Officials also said some groups tried to break the fence around the police station. They say such actions are indicators of a riot, which led them to do dispersal tactics, including tear gas, flashbangs. More than 60 people were booked into Hennepin County Jail. Our ask is that people listen to what we're saying and that they come and they express their First Amendment right and their viewpoint, but to throw objects with the intent of hurting other people, whether they're police officers or not, is just unacceptable. It was a different story in Minneapolis. Police there said only two people were arrested for curfew violations. Both were cited and released, and there were no reports of looting. Another intense night in Brooklyn Center for both police and protesters. Thank you, Kaya. Now, we are expecting charges today against Kim Potter, the now former Brooklyn Center police officer who shot and killed Dante Wright. Jennifer Austin joins us from nearby the police station with what we know about her and her resignation. Jen? Yes, yeah, so the Washington County Attorney's Office is handling this case. Some of our colleagues spoke with uh, County Attorney Pete Orpit yesterday. He says they believe they now have enough information for charges against now former Brooklyn Center Police Officer Kim Potter. This, of course, comes after her resignation uh, yesterday. In her resignation letter, Potter wrote, 
I have loved every minute of being a police officer. She went on to write, it's in the best interest of the community, the department, and fellow officers that I resign. Of course, some of those minutes of Potter's police career included the fatal shooting of Dante Wright. Carol Evan confirmed the shooting happened as Potter did field training with a rookie officer. Her career is highlighted with some honors, like when Potter was among co-workers in 2014 who were awarded the Medal of Merit for their bravery responding to a house fire. The Brooklyn Center mayor said he had not asked for Potter's resignation, but supports her no longer being on the force. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that this will help uh, bring some calm to, uh, to the community. Although, uh, you know, I think ultimately people want justice. They want, you know, full accountability under the law. Uh, and so that's what we're going to continue to work for. The mayor also said yesterday that all the officers in the Brooklyn Center Police Department do not live in Brooklyn Center. Potter lives in Champlin. We confirmed with the Champlin police chief yesterday that she and her family have left the state. Yeah, a lot of people wondering about what this means for Potter's pension. Uh, Jennifer, thank you for that. Now, we've also learned from Mayor Mike Elliott that Brooklyn Center Police Chief Tim Gannon is stepping down. On Monday, Gannon said he believed the shooting was accidental and that Potter meant to fire her taser, not her gun. Commander Tony Groening will step in as acting police chief. Well, it's a powerful moment. The families of Dante Wright and George Floyd came together to push for justice. During their break from trial yesterday, Floyd's family stood outside the courthouse alongside Wright's family to comfort them. Wright's mother recalls the last phone call with her son and his girlfriend inside the car. She pointed the phone towards the driver's seat and my son was laying there unresponsive. My Lord. That was the last time that I seen my son. The mother of Wright's two-year-old son shared her memories and her pain, saying that Dante won't be there for their son's second birthday. Ben Crump, the attorney for George Floyd's family, and now the Wright family, had this to say. Ten miles from where the Chauvin trial regarding George Floyd was taking place, that a police officer would shoot and kill another unarmed black man. We also learn that these two families are connected in more ways than one. George Floyd's girlfriend, Courtney Ross, was reportedly also Dante Wright's teacher. You can see her hugging Dante's mom in this image here. And right now, Dante's family, they want to see justice in the form of an arrest and a conviction. Chris, Gia. Yeah, there were a lot of tears and anger in that uh, yesterday. Alicia, thank you. The Today Show will have an interview with the mother of Wright's son, China Whitaker, about Wright's death and its impact on her family. You can catch that at 7 right after sunrise. After 38 prosecution witnesses, the defense is now presenting their case in Derek Chauvin's murder trial. They brought forward several witnesses yesterday. They introduced three key witnesses, including a use of force expert who was in the car with George Floyd um, and a park police officer who was also at the scene. Now, Officer Peter Chang says he was concerned for the officer's safety because of a loud and aggressive crowd. Now, be sure to tune into our trial coverage right here on CARE 11. We'll be airing gavel to gavel coverage starting around 9 a.m. You can also follow along on our digital platforms. Turning our attention to the vaccine rollout, Minnesota is following the FDA and CDC's recommendation to pause Johnson & Johnson shots. Officials say six women out of the nearly 7 million people that got the shot developed rare and severe blood clotting. U.S. officials are calling this an extremely rare reaction, but will investigate. The CDC says if you got the shot more than a month ago, your risk is very low. But if you got the shot within the last few weeks, Make sure to be aware of the following symptoms, severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, or shortness of breath. If you experience any of those, you should contact your health care provider and seek medical treatment. Now, NDH says, well, it's pausing the Johnson & Johnson vaccine out of an abundance of caution. It is rare, and there hasn't been any side, serious side effects, rather, to the more than 184,000 Minnesotans who have that vaccine. When you compare the numbers to the totals that we have, 1.4 million people fully vaccinated and 2.1 million with at least a dose that's of the people eligible. Now we're also seeing almost half of this pie green now. 47.7% of people eligible have at least one dose of a vaccine. Now this all comes as the state sees a high number of people being hospitalized. So MDH says 676 people. That's these two numbers total and combined. It's the highest that we've seen since January. 
January 11th. The state says almost 160 of those are in the ICU, this line right here, and they believe this is tied to that spread of that B117 variant. When it comes to new infections, though, another day close to 2,000 cases in these blue bars here, and that's where the two-week moving average is right now, around 2,000 cases per day. Let's take a live look outside right now at 610. Waking up to flurries in parts of the metro. Laura, I even grabbed my pea coat this morning going out the door. Yeah, you, you do need to. I got my puffer on uh, today. It's damp. There's flurries. Uh, and that's after quite a bit of snow fell across parts of northern Minnesota. Six inches is the top spot. Grand Rapids and Brainerd at three and point three officially for us here uh, in the Twin Cities. We still have flurries in the forecast this morning and on and off throughout the day. Transitioning over into more of some sprinkles and mist as we get into the afternoon. Dress for the wind chill today, about 10 degrees cooler than the actual temperature. And a look at the roads, uh, still tracking a handful of crashes now around the Twin Cities Metro. In fact, a reported rollover crash just north of Lakeville just cleared, so roads, they could be slick in certain spots. We did have some wet road conditions and uh, those snow flurries, especially on ramps, bridges, and overpasses. But here's a live look over in the Vadness Heights area. This crash is really jamming things up. 35 East southbound blocking that right shoulder. This is at County Road E. You can see folks just getting by uh, with some single lane traffic. We'll show you a few other traffic cameras. This is that closure I was talking about, multi vehicle vehicle wreck happened in the four o'clock hour uh, of sunrise 169 again both directions still currently closed off uh, and just further north of that on 169 a car completely spun around on this bridge at highway 610 so unfortunately we are seeing a lot of crashes in the bird's eye view of that serious injury crash like i said inv involving multiple vehicles uh, again we'll be talking about a, a detour option here's a look at the map uh, drive safe watch your speeds this morning all right alicia well spring means returning to patios and bars and restaurants around the Twin Cities. The precautions you should know about before enjoying some food and drinks outside. Then he dominates the NCAA and now he plans to dominate the world. How an Olympic bound gopher wrestler is tackling life on and off the map. Our troops are marching home when President Biden plans on bringing more military members back to the U.S.